Reading research articles is probably one of the best ways to actually find new research ideas or research gaps. In this video, what I did is I looked at one research article. So this is in the field of education and it's specifically looking at how diet impacts the academic performance of Montessori school age children. So this is specifically looking at year six to nine. And what I did is I did a quick kind of read through and was kind of instantly able to generate six different research questions that I think could be explored in some fashion. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to all six of the research questions and explain how you could start learning to generate these questions. So how did I get them? And then what are different strategies that you could use to be able to generate research questions on your own? So the very first idea that I generated came from the limitation section. So within the limitation section, they talked about the fact that due to cost, they didn't run any kind of chemical analysis on these students who they compared their diet and some other demographic factors with their academic performance. And so what we know, and since I my background is in chemistry, what I know is that just because I eat something and you eat something doesn't mean our bodies are going to react to it in the exact same way. And so what I would be interested in is actually doing a metabolic analysis. So how does the metabolism of an individual impact their academic performance on a specific test? To run this study, what you would probably do is take a like serum sample or a saliva sample, something like that, before and after completing a task. And then what you can do is analyze that using something like mass spectrometry or liquid chromatography that I use and take those examples and figure out how, what markers are there for people who did really, really well in that specific test versus those who did not do as well in that specific test. And that kind of helps us to understand what metabolism might be affecting because they talk a lot about the nutritional um, needs for things like learning and, per and academic performance. So if we can track the metabolism and understand those nutritional needs at a chemical level and a metabolite level, then that would lead to some really exciting research into how can we improve academic performance if it's being limited by the nutritional availability um, for a given student. So idea number one is how does the metabolism of an individual while doing a test affect their performance on a given test? The second idea or research question comes both from the limitations, but it also comes from expanding a variable. And so within the limitations, they talk about the fact that they weren't able to do it on a wide range of ages. So they only looked at ages six through nine. So what would be really interesting is to be able to expand that. And so does the nutritional needs or nutritional relevance to academic performance change as you age. So does a high schooler and a kindergartner really need the same nutritional needs to be able to perform the same way? Being able to analyze how does age impact how nutrition relates to academic performance. The third research question, and I think this one would be particularly interesting, is to take this a study and essentially run it in America. So this is translational. This is looking at one variable and kind of swapping it out for a different option of that or a different variable itself. So this is really common if you were to like look at one disease and you see a study done in one disease and you go, that would be a super study in this other disease. It's translational research. So because this study was done in Nepal, they're going to have a lot of different cultural and religious and all of these different things, ethnic diversity that is different than what is in America. So if you took this study and because I'm in America, I'm choosing America and reran it in America, like they found that religion was actually an important impact on academic performance. And how would we find that here where we do have a very different ethnic diversity? We do have a very different religious diversity than what you would find in Nepal. And we have a lot of cultural factors, especially in our diet, which what's typically determined or in science, we typically call it a Western diet here. So we tend to have a more high fat, high sugar diet. How does that affect academic performance? And what do we see with that? So this would be translational research. Essentially, we're analyzing 
how the nutrition impacts academic performance in the same age range of a Montessori school, but with Amer in America, and then being able to look at a lot of different factors because we have a different population that we're analyzing. The fourth idea is to analyze how does the gut microbiota of children impact their academic performance. And so whenever we're talking about nutritional needs, we are also talking about something called the gut microbiota, which is basically the microbes that are within your gut, your intestines. And what a lot of research has found is that this is actually impactful in a lot of different things within your body. And so what we could look at is we would basically take samples from children and then be able to analyze those samples, look at what bacteria and microbes are in their gut in what proportions, and is there a um, correlation between those who perform well and those who don't perform as well. And typically this can also be linked to food. So this would actually be combining two fields. So instead of just doing like a survey analysis like this study did, we take another um, assay and combine it together to be able to look at both from a gut microbiome perspective and from an academic performance and nutrition perspective, can we combine those together and kind of tell the story of this nutrition causes this change in the gut microbiome and that change is then linked to academic performance. And so it's giving more of the story by combining different fields together. So the fifth idea is does differently balanced meals impact performance on math tests, reading comprehension, and creative activities? So essentially to analyze this, what, what I drew inspiration from within the article is that they talk about how like protein and fat intake can correlate with different academic performance. But again, they're looking at academic performance really correlation, right? How well does this correlate to each other. It's not that they gave a specific diet and then saw something on a test. So we want to move this a little bit more into causation with also expanding the variable of what academic performance looks like. So what we would do here is we would give a few different diets with different ratios of carbs, fat, and protein to someone and then ask them to perform a specific test. And then we can look at those different diets and how they did on these three different tests. So we're also expanding the variable of not only just academic performance or specifically in reading or something like that. It's three specific tests looking at how well do they perform in math, which is more of a logical function. How well do, do they perform in reading, which is a little bit more, um, reading and memory function, and then a creative task. So something like drawing or something like that, how well would they perform in that? And then being able to link it back to, should you have certain meals relative to different tasks that you need to perform in a given day? And then the sixth idea that I came up with is, comes from within the article, they talk about the fact that there were several students that had malnutrition and malnutrition was not was correlated with not as significantly high of performance. So then a question is, if we expand this out through time, if somebody is malnourished and they're not performing as well, if we recover that, so if we bring them up to a non-malnourished standpoint or to a normal standpoint, then does that academic performance recover? Can you, is it actually changed through time? Or if they're malnourished now, does that effect last um, throughout time, even if they are not malnourished later on? And so this would be an interesting study to do um, if you did find students that were in a study that were malnourished, and then you were able to get them back up to normal health weight levels, would you then, monitoring their academic performance, would you see an increase in that? I think whenever you're looking at this, you have kind of a few different things is it's not only the nutritional aspect, you also are running into like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So the base needs is really your physiological ones and one of those is food. So if you're fulfilling that base need, then are they able to apply themselves more because they're not worried about being hungry? And so these are a few different things that you would consider in like a discussion part if you did this study. It's not just simply that you've now recovered the nutrition, but you're also fulfilling that base need there. So overall, these are six different ideas. And the main exercises that I really used within these is expanding a variable. So for example, looking at different age ranges is expanding the age range variable and looking at how that impacts the study. 
doing translational, so taking out one option for one variable and moving it to a different one, even if it's not one that was studied. So for example, in this case, I would take it from Nepal and move it to America where there's a very different demographic available. Another one is combining fields. So looking at something like the gut microbiome and adding that in as a different field's perspective on the issue. Then there's also looking at the limitations. And so this you can typically find in the conclusions or limitations section of an article. And it's going to tell you what they think that their limitations are and can you find a way to address those limitations in order to make the study more broadly applicable or give additional insights to the study. And then a final good one is whenever you're reading a study that is very correlational, if you can design an experiment to look at if there is a causation effect in there, if you can actually control variables and assign randomly an experimental variable, and then you have independent and dependent variables that you can then look at, that is also another way to devise an experiment where there might've just been correlational data. Again, this is a little bit more difficult whenever you're moving into humans and and the feasibility aspect is something you have to control for, something like submitting to an IRB approval board. That's something that is an additional thing, which might not all of my ideas might be of actually approved by an IRB board. So overall, these are six different ideas. And the next thing that I would do is take these six ideas and look at testing them to make sure that they would be novel or change them so that they can be novel make sure that they're gonna be significant and impactful to the field, and then also make sure that they are feasible, and then I can go on with working on these ideas. I hope this video was helpful, and don't forget to download the 30 Day Research Jumpstart Guide if you wanna know how to test these ideas, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.